Good day, it's Tony Fortunato from the technology firm. I'm going to walk you through another free webcast since uh, I didn't realize how popular these things were going to be once I posted them on YouTube. So let's go through another one. This is one that I did uh, regarding packet capture and packet slicing. So let's jump right into this one, make it real quick again. So the presentation was a one hour long, it's free of course. And we have uh, packet capture tips and tricks and protocol analysis tips and tricks. And obviously there's the details. You'll see all of this when you actually watch the presentation. Um, NetScout has a cool tool called an OptiView and you can capture packets in line, which is really neat. So I cover a little bit of that. Why capture packets? So we go through all the various reasons why you might, might want to capture them. So determine application behavior, look for suspicious behavior, figure out application dependencies, creating a profile or baseline and documenting the effect of application on a matter of fact or network upgrades. We look for packet loss retransmissions, the biggest reason why things might be slow, or just big delays, a lot of latency, right? Latency and delay, pretty well the same word. Out of order packets, application or protocol errors, and verifying if clear text is being used. A little bit of a security angle there. So packet slicing, what's a packet slice? In summary, a packet slice means I'm not capturing the entire packet. So if you just want the MAC address, IP, TCP, and a little bit of the application layer, you can always start with 128 bytes, just a round number to start with. And then from there, you can either get a little more or a little less, depending on what you're trying to do. Packet slicing is a very valuable technique because uh, many times you don't need all the data because it's not useful, it's not readable, it's encrypted. You want to conserve disk, disk space, that's the big one, right? So you'll, your trace files will be a fraction of the size. Legal issues, sometimes you're not allowed to see the payload, it's very sensitive information. And then it'll also reduce the load on the capture device, so you don't have uh, a big, uh, a bunch of big packets going through, you have a bunch of little packets. So some analyzers like it, some actually don't, so it's kind of nice for you to find out. In the um, OptiView, this is what the packet capture screen looks like, and that's where the slice is. The default is a full-size packet, as it is with Wireshark, by the way. And if you do capture a packet that's been sliced in ClearSight, which is on the OptiView, it actually tells you 64 bytes captured. Um, it tells you right there. But on a Wireshark trace, it tells you the same thing. Just pay attention to this just right before. It says 443 bytes on the wire and then 64 bytes captured. Same thing up here, 44 bytes on the wire, 64 bytes captured. That's how you know it's been sliced. Once it's been sliced, you, you'll never get that data back, right? Capture buffers, so how much data are you going to capture? Uh, with the OptiView, you can actually set that, like most analyzers. So when you hit that, in this case, 16 meg threshold, what do you do? Stop the capture when the buffer is full. That's the default. You can actually change it so it wraps or it stops when a packet is found, called the trigger packet. With Wireshark, it's always running, it's always capturing, and then you can get this big, huge temporary file um, in your temp file folder with Wireshark. Ring buffer, sequential files. So if you do want to capture more than one uh, trace file because you want a lot of data but you don't want one great big fat file, uh, you can do that. And this is a screenshot from the actual OptiView, but the same thing with Wireshark. It's called a ring buffer. So you can see file one, two, and three. But when you do that, remember that in between those files, you've lost those packets. If any data was moving while the, the analyzer was stopping and saving and starting, you've technically lost that data. Then I went through a little anatomy of a connection. So here we go. You know, the syn syn -ac. I've actually spelt it all out over here. And that way you can kind of reference what the packets look like and what it really means. The big question, is it a delay or lost packet? Well, if the sender is sending one, two, three and had to resend three, that's a retransmission on his end. But if you were capturing from the receiver side, you would have seen one, two, big delay and number three, and you would think it's latency. The moral of the story, try to capture from the sender's perspective or the sender's network. And that way you can figure out for sure if it's a retransmission. If you want to check your machine, just type netstat-s and you'll see that it says segments retransmitted and that will tell you how many has been retransmitted. There's no easy way to zero this out. So just pay attention to the number, redo your test and see if the number increments um, at all. Okay. Now here's a whole bunch of screenshots from a tool called ClearSight just so I can run through them and show you what it looks like. It does a lot of really cool reassembly, like FTP file transfers. This is a lot like the Wireshark follow the stream. Uh, this will basically do the same thing. What it does do pretty good though, is that it'll reassemble your video and your audio streams as well. If you have RTP video streams, it'll do that too, which is kind of neat. Web page reassembly, it'll actually rebuild the web page. 
you have some SQL or Oracle stuff, it'll actually show you the select. It'll actually show you the actual data that came back, which is kind of nice. VoIP reporting, you can see your MOS uh, scores, QoS index scores to see how well that call was. And lastly, IPTV, same kind of thing. You can reassemble your video. And by the way, everything that you can reassemble, you can actually save. So you can save the audio stream, save the video stream, and all that kind of stuff. So that's it. That's what it's all about. I don't want to drag this on too long. So I hope you enjoyed that and enjoy the video.